example 3.4.5 of the of the book it shows a situation where we have the input of a transistor modeled as parallel resistor and capacitors and the intent is to design a, a T network such that the impedance of this load gets transformed to 50 ohms um, you know at point at point E here so um, the example in the book uh, determines that you know a, a shunt capacitor of 2.39 picofarads with these two series inductors will accomplish such a, a feat um, so I just wanted to reproduce um, that example using Sim Smith, um, taking a couple of different approaches, and just want to show you what it looks like to, um, you know, to do those rotations along the Smith chart uh, that I was just referring to in those four images. Um, so the load in this picture here is on the right, and the load in this here is on the left. I modeled the load using a resistor and a capacitor, so these two elements here are actually my uh, the load, the input to the transistor, so that would correspond to these two guys here. Um, you can see that I have the 1.91 picofarad capacitor with the 31 ohm resistor, and my operating frequency is uh, 2 gigahertz, which I guess is the frequency used here. If, if you put an inductor in series with your load, then it will cause your um, impedance to rotate upward on the Smith chart on a circle of constant resistance. Okay, so um, basically the the input impedance at point A corresponds to this point here. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's not true. That would be uh, that would be this point, right, because it's purely resistive here. Here we're down in the lower half of the plane, so there would be some capacitance, so that would be point B. So the input impedance at point B is represented by this point here, and you can see that if we move to uh, point C and we measure our input impedance here, impedance here after the inductor, um, the inductor causes a rotation along a circle of constant resistance up to point C like this. So now we're, um, the inductor was uh, large enough to um, transform our impedance from being capacitive to being inductive now. Um, so now point D corresponds to this point, okay? So again, we're measuring our uh, input impedance after the capacitor, and we have a shunt capacitor. So the shunt capacitor, capacitor causes our um, impedance to rotate downward along a circle of constant conductance down to point D, okay? So it's very important to understand, uh, you know, these rotations and what circles you're supposed to um, follow, and I'll explain why in a sec when I take another approach at, at this problem. Um, so to get to point E, which is our input impedance that we're looking for, we're trying to get this to 50 ohms. Uh, 50 ohms is in the center of the Smith chart, um, so we add a, uh, we see that in order to go from point D to the center of the Smith chart, we need to rotate upward. That tells us that we need an inductor. Um, so, you know, an inductor with an with inductance of 3.98 um, Nano Henry's at 2 gigahertz puts us up at point E as desired. So I just basically um, duplicated the the circuit that's shown uh, in the example, and it looks like it uh, it works. So now um, one thing that we talked about was um, making transmission lines look like capacitors. So one thing I wanted to try was okay, well, can we replace this capacitor with a transmission line with an open circuit transmission line of a certain length? Can we make it have a capacitance of 2.39 picofarads, um, you know, at 2 gigahertz, and kind of uh, replace C, replace this um, capacitor with a piece of copper? So I took the same approach that I took last time. I made a, a load that's open circuited. Uh, this time I made it 10 mega ohms. It just needs to be a really big value. I set my frequency to 2 gigahertz. I set I selected a point on the Smith chart that I wanted to rotate to, which corresponds to the uh, capacitance that we're looking for. I set I assumed a velocity factor of uh, 0.67, which is pretty common. Um, I mean the you know the equation did, or sorry the uh, the example problem uh, didn't uh, define the velocity factor, so I, I picked that my myself, but uh, that's okay. Um, in reality, we would. Um, 
you know, in theory, know the velocity factor of the uh, material that we're working with here. Um, anyway, so then I adjusted the length of the transmission line until my open circuit point rotated uh, to this point here. Okay, and I had a length of 1.56 centimeters. So here you can see I replaced the capacitor with a transmission line, with a open circuited transmission line. So you can see here at this end of the of the transmission line, it's kind of open circuited. Um, you can see that there's another one here that's uh, short circuited. So we could have taken that approach as well, but we would have had to rotate an extra quarter of a wavelength because we would have had to go from the short circuited uh, position all the way around to wherever the you know the that capacitor value was. But anyway, um, so you can see I replaced uh, the 2.39 picofarad capacitor with a uh, transmission line, and it got us to the same point in the center of the Smith chart, which is great. Um, another thing we could have done was we could have used a completely different network. Um, so for for this uh, right here is point B, so that's this point. I could see that. You know, my my goal was to get to the center of the Smith chart. So I basically want, you know, I want to get to the center of the Smith chart with as few moves as possible. Let's say. So I saw, okay, well, if I if I rotate down like this and I get onto this uh, circle of constant um, conductance, then I know that I'll be able to uh, rotate my way back up to the center of the Smith chart. So using the, um, you know. The fact that adding a series uh, capacitor is going to rotate me downward on the Smith chart, I um, inserted a series capacitor, and I tweaked the the value of the capacitor um, until I rotated down and ended up on this curve. And then I, um, you know, since I wanted to rotate upward, I knew that involved an inductor, and since I want to rotate on a curve of constant conductance, I knew that involved a, a shunt inductor. So I inserted a shunt inductor there, and I tweaked my uh, inductance value until I rotate it upward um, to the center of the Smith chart. So here's another approach at the same problem. I use one fewer element. Uh, the example in the book uses uh, three discrete components. I'm only using two, so maybe I'm less susceptible to tolerances, things like that. Um, so why might somebody choose one kind of topology over another? Well, um, with this circuit here, um, as frequency increases, uh, this capacitor is going to look more and more like a short circuit. Uh, this inductor is going to look more and more like an open circuit. So um, this circuit here is actually a high pass filter. Okay, And then this T network down here from the book, um, at high frequencies, this capacitor is going to look like a, um, is going to short, you know, point D or C or whatever here to ground, which means it's going to uh, attenuate high frequencies. So this is a low pass filter. Okay, so um, depending on the application, we might, you know, want a low pass filter versus a high pass filter, or vice versa, or whatever. So uh, these are the kind of things that uh, the factors that we take into consideration when choosing what type of network we wanna we want to go with. So you know, if, if we know that there's going to be a lot of uh, high frequency noise in our system, then maybe using the uh, the T network is more ideal. Um, uh, this slide just wants, I wanted to stress the point here that, uh, again, I'm using the high pass filter network here, um, but I changed my operating frequency. I changed it from 2 gigahertz to 700 megahertz, and uh, look where I ended up on the Smith chart. So I just wanted to stress the fact that when you're using the Smith chart, you are using, you are measuring or calculating or working with impedances and reflection coefficients and that kind of stuff at a certain frequency. So at a different frequency, um, it's, you know, things change quite a bit. Okay, so uh, just keep that in mind. Um, and if you're doing any kind of like dual band matching where you're trying to match like two different frequencies, um, it can be pretty challenging um, because, uh, you know, you, you move your position on like let's just say for example that we needed to a matching network that matches two gigahertz and seven hundred megahertz. Like let's say they're two different um, like cellular um, frequencies or something like that. And uh, you know so we design our matching network and uh, two gigahertz was matched perfectly, but then we look at the impact that it had on seven hundred megahertz and we see oh we're we're way off here right. So there's a lot of um, you know there's different techniques that you that you can take um, that you can use to to try to 
uh, match for multiple frequencies, but um, it's pretty challenging. Uh, so finally, the the last thing, yeah, the last thing that I wanted to to look at was um, doing away with um, discrete components altogether. So I have my load here on the left, the same load from the example. Um, so that puts me at point B here. I know that a if I have a transmission line, um, you know that connects point B to point C. Um, I know that that transmission line is going to rotate me on a circle, and the amount of rotation uh, depends on the um, you know twice the electrical length, like we talked about uh, a little bit earlier. Um, so essentially. I can tweak the electrical length of this transmission line, or you know the actual physical length of the transmission line, and again, I'm going. My target is the center of the circle, or the t the center of the Smith chart. So my target is uh, this circle of constant conductance. So I I add my um, transmission line in series. I um, change the the length of the transmission line until my impedance gets transformed along this circle of, of uh, you know, where the magnitude of the co reflection coefficient is constant until I end up on this uh, curve of constant conductance. And then, um, again, I need to rotate downward, so I need something that looks capacitive. So I use an open circuited transmission line, um, you know, that looks like a capacitor. In this case, I'm not, uh, I didn't figure out what capacitance value I needed. Rather, I just inserted um, a shunted uh, open circuited transmission line, like a, a transmition line stub, I guess they would call it, that we'll, we'll see in chapter 8. And I played around with the length of it until I rotate it down to the center of the Smith chart. Okay? So this is just another um, approach at the same problem, where this time I don't use any dis discrete components, I just use transmission lines. Um, and we're going to see more of that in chapter 8. Um, that's it, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.